Kelly Freeman, and we are here for an educational video about learning about autonomic medicine, and I'm joined by Dr. Jim Glenn. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks so, for having me. Well, tell, tell us about yourself. Well, I, I'm a cardiologist mm -hmm. uh, and did cardiology in the community in Charleston, South Carolina for 28, 29 years, and then got an opportunity to join the faculty at the medical university uh, and I've been there for almost 20 years. Fifteen years ago, um, uh, a patient uh, was, became my responsibility uh, with autonomic failure, about which I knew very little. Uh, the patient was diabetic, and so there was a fair bit of literature that I was able to uh, review. Uh, and in taking care of this patient, went on for which went on for a period of several years, I became interested and began to attempt to teach myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I discovered that I knew a lot that I didn't understand. <laughs> and so, so I sought to understand it. How did, you, how did you even know from the beginning that there could be something autonomic going on in this Well, in this I'm not patient? sure I knew the name of it. Okay. Uh, but it became clearer as, as one added up the difficulties that he had. Uh, orthostatic hypotension being primarily the burden, and then uh, GI tract uh, difficulties, uh, dry eyes, dry mouth, the bladder didn't empty. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. obviously these things were connected, and the only way one could connect that is through autonomic function that was not working. So, so did you have to do a lot of research on your own before you discovered that there was an autonomic problem you going know, quite on? Quite how that evolved, I'm I'm not sure. I, my memory um, is that it dawned on me pretty early that these things were connected, and we tended to as associate that with diabetic neuropathy. While that's true, that's not nearly sufficient to lead to understanding. Oh. And then, uh, which was sort of interesting to me, I was asked to give a grand rounds, a cardiology grand rounds, which is a pretty tough thing to do in the, essence, in the sense that um, you've got a discerning faculty that uh, is um, interested in you doing it well, <laughs> and so you feed a hell to the fire. And I reviewed that, um, that grand rounds that I gave 10, 12 years ago uh, and have struck, I was struck by how much information was in there that I really didn't understand. Now looking back, now that you yeah. know what you know. Yeah. So, so you took an interest uh, initially in autonomic medicine because you had one patient. How did you go about really learning more about autonomic medicine and where has that taken you now in your journey? through reading, uh, plus I had the great fortune, uh, a neurologist, uh, a gentleman by the name of Ken Bergman, uh, who was interested in autonomic medicine and was, uh, was really properly trained, was at the medical university at the time, and, and he was of great help in being tutor to me. Uh, here, for example, he would say is what you need to know, and here's a way that you can learn that. So would you say that there's a general in, in medicine today at the community level that there's an acceptance for the understanding of autonomic medicine or is it still quite difficult to uh, gain uh, well, I think interest? It's, I think it's quite difficult. Okay. Um, uh, it, it is, uh, practitioners have a difficult time of it, um, largely because of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it, we're all interested in medicine, that's why we're there, mm -hmm. but we discover that seeing X numbers of patients a day, having to uh, have a workflow that moves forward, it's very difficult to take a detailed history uh, mm -hmm. and then think about something for another period of time. I understand you went up to have a mini fellowship for a couple of weeks up at the NIH and tell us a little bit about that. Well it became clear to me that I needed to be tutored, um, <laughs> okay. in, meaning that yeah. I was not understanding a lot of what I was learning, plus uh, the field was so broad uh, I needed to know, uh, have some leadership through that. Um, I, I looked around for what fellowships or places that might accept me for a period of time. 
Uh, Dr. Goldstein is particularly keen on mentorship, um, even though his lab um, and uh, his work uh, is f fundamental to any understanding in autonomic research, his mentorship is, is critical to him. So he was willing to accept me uh, for the mini fellowship. I have often told those who <laughs> ask what my training is, meaning what did you do your internship? And I will add, well, I did my fellowship at the NIH. <laughs> and I said, before, <laughs> I have to give you full disclosure, that lasted two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> and then the next thing they want to know, well, did he fire you? <laughs> no, he was very gracious. Um, so it was a time that, um, and Dr. Gold, uh, my boss, was was also in, instrumental in supporting me in that. He saw that as critical as well. Oh, that's wonderful. So I spent two weeks uh, as a mini, M-I-N-I -I fellow mm -hmm. uh, with Dr. Uh, Goldstein. He devoted his time to me for that time. He was doing, for example, they were involved in the uh, uh, Parkinsonian uh, a trial uh, mm -hmm. looking for those who might give evidence of the disease much earlier than they would become right. symptomatic. Uh, and he concentrated uh, uh, several patients during that two weeks that otherwise he would not have. Oh, isn't it? So it was, uh, it was full, uh, full time. So, so what would you say to physicians who might be interested in studying autonomic medicine but are not able to go up to the NIH and spend two weeks in fellowship? Well, I think there's several ways to do that, but for me, the most useful would be to access uh, Dr. Goldstein's textbook, The Principles of Autonomic Medicine. It's available at no cost. Mm -hmm. um, it's in iteration 3.0. That's important because that in that model, you're able to go into the uh, table of contents uh, to any specific item uh, and go directly to that information. You can print it, and I printed mine, <clears throat> but if you do, be careful because it's 800 pages long. <laughs> right. I, you, can, yes. you can kill the printer. <laughs> you, uh, right. Exactly. But to me, that was, uh, that's the most helpful. And as a part of this video <clears throat> series, we now uh, have the, his course that corresponds with that textbook um, available in, in video format as well, which I, I think will be a great tool for Oh, I, I agree with that. And you might know, uh, I'm certain you do know, that prior to the boards, he gives a, that, that course through uh, on computer uh, that's interactive um, using a mechanism of uh, one of the computer mechanisms, uh, not Snapchat, but you're able to all convene. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> and he does that once a week. Um, in fact, I, I saw to see some of the fellows who took, I've taken it twice. Um, that the, um, I see some of the fellows with whom I did that, um, whom I've not met, but I felt as if I spent several hours every Sunday in their library. And we've <laughs> right. actually become sort yeah. of friends so as if we're alumni yeah. well, in, in ways we do. Oh, yes, that's great. Right. So as we wrap this up, tell Tell us if there's one thing that you could share with physicians um, or even other healthcare providers about if you want to learn more about autonomic medicine, uh, what do you do and what word of advice would you have for them? I think, um, I think the textbook is critical. Um, it, it's more than just sitting down and reading a book. Uh, it's so well done. Uh, and Dr. Goldstein has done it, uh, realizing that he is not lecturing to thought leaders. He's lecturing to those of us who want to know and don't. Uh, and you can, one can get as deeply involved in that as one would like. Uh, I think uh, the second thing is that I think uh, keeping up with the literature, uh, the literature in autonomic medicine is pretty much a clinical autonomic research, which is the uh, journal of the autonomic society. But it has an understanding uh, that it's not lecturing necessarily uh, only to those who are doing fundamental research, but those of us who are trying to participate in this environment, uh, it's a, it, it is critical to that. And I think being part of the Autonomic Society is likewise a, um, a critical part of it. It's a, a once a year meeting. Uh, you get to see, meet, and, and discuss issues with the thought leaders in autonomic medicine, and quite honestly, they're 
uh, you could put them on a school bus. I mean, it's not not hundreds of these pretty, folks. Pretty impressive group. And it's interesting. Yeah. They they uh, seem to have sworn a pledge to be to make themselves available in conversation with the likes of me, uh, which has been of great help. Uh, I'm sure it's in a, I could abuse it if I tried, but on a number of occasions I've sought an inside view from Steve Renino and others, um, and they're really uh, seemingly quite anxious to do that. I, I asked um, uh, Steve Renino the other day when I was thanking him for answering an email, I said, how many of those do you get a month, a thousand? And he said, it, he was thinking, my hunch is a lot, uh, but just how open these guys are oh, to, well, to wanting to be helpful to you. Well, thank you for taking time oh, to share joy. your insight about how you've learned about autonomic medicine, and I know that's going to be encouragement to others. Let, let me add one thing, if I may. Um, before I went to spend the time with Dr. Goldstein, I felt that I needed to tell him uh, Dr. Goldstein, I'm 72. That's been some years ago. <laughs> and I thought he would say, oh, my goodness, you know, we, we, we can't really spend that kind of resource on someone of your age. But he said, good. Then that means if you're going to continue to practice that, um, that you're going to have the time to do this, whereas if you were in full productive cardiology, maybe that's not the right term, you probably would not have the time. So he seemed to be pleased. So regardless of age, it's an, it's an open door to learn. Quite honestly, I think the older the better. <laughs> All right, I, 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 like, probably, I like it. I, I want to keep hearing that. I'm going to, I'm going to repeat well, that I, in my I, own I, mind. I, I believe that to be true. And one thing he did have me promise, he said if you're going to leave the practice, if you're going to leave and retire, you, you have to identify someone who's going to carry this forward because it's yeah. just not taught in medical schools. That's yet. so true. Well, thank you so much well, for taking your time with you us today. Me. Thank you for having me. All right.